a lot to do in a short period of time. This is the last meeting. Senator Albers, would you do the invocation for us? Yeah, please bow your heads. Lord, uh, thank you for this day. Thank you for the uh, giving us the energy we need to finish strong for this legislative session. Just ask you to give us your wisdom and discernment as we proceed. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Is Representative Daniel here? Okay. Um, uh, is uh, Chairman Blackman here? You, you, you want to do that for we, that bill is exactly the same as you had. We can get you a copy if you need it. We'll bring one out, but yeah. Uh, 1021. This is a challenger tax credit. I think it's consistent with uh, some of the measures that we implemented a couple of sessions ago that uh, I know you, you put a lot of effort and work into from 1437, but um, when we took the standard deduction and uh, rolled some things into 12 and 24 and uh, moved our, our rate that is continued down. This actually addresses the dependents and uh, moves that number from 3,000 to 4,000. All right, and let me give everyone the, the LC number that we're working off of. It's LC 50-0661, and that is House Bill 1021. As the chairman stated, the personal exemption for children will go from 3,000 to 4,000 for each uh, dependent. Appropriate time, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion. All right, um, I think there's no questions on this one. Move we, to pass. We've got a motion, is there a second? Second. Second by Senator uh, Brass. We've got uh, any other discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Child care. All right. Um, any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Did she have a Senate sponsor? We can check with her. I'm not. Sorry, I just walked in for us. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, who was Ruskin? It's Man, that's a terrible choice. I, <laughs> all right. Well, good luck. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> Tough crowd. Okay, we've got, um, I don't think Senator Anavitarte is here. He wanted to do something. So we'll go on to uh, uh, dive into 1080, I guess, with Representative Carpenter here. If you don't mind, if I get your version of it, that'd be fantastic. If you yeah, we'll get me one it. to you. And actually, there was a couple of technical changes they claimed. So um, it's a little bit new to me as well. Is that the right one? 1180. Yeah, 1180. It's been a long day. Tillery, good to see you, sir. How did the peach, uh, Shelly, how did the peaches? Good. good. All right. Um, you can start or I can start. No, you just go right ahead. Uh, love to hear it. So I look. So uh, t tell me the LC number they gave you. Make sure we've got the right one. Uh, LC fifty oh nine sixteen S, sir. We have O four S. Okay, he's passing them out. They. Uh, this is even fresher than the said, one that said they were a couple of uh, technical changes. So I've got to be the judge of that. they all get passed out. All right, with the, you can you can look at the um, new language there. We can go to page two. And I'll, we'll do this together. Any comments you've got on that? I think that's still your language. Which, oh, it's, I'm sorry, one more time. 
page two. I don't think that's my language, but I'm absolutely okay with it. Obviously, okay. it looks like Section 2 uh, is a conversation that we've had in the past about making sure that the state of Georgia is collecting royalties on any uh, any film tax any film that utilizes the tax credit in the state. Is that fair? Correct. Yeah, that's uh, that's new language, but for this legislation, but we did have it on some post production stuff in the past, and I fully support that. Obviously. Okay, page three there, your affiliates. Look and see if that's what you had. Yeah, I think that's I think that's clean up language because we had some information about. Uh, um, so that's the definition affiliates. of affiliates, yep. which opens the barn door. Okay. Um, I don't think there's anything substantive on page four or five. Um, some clean up stuff. The the post production interactive has sort of been separated out in a second section. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. It looks like that that language on 149 marked out through 166 was to make sure that video games got removed from this code section because yeah. obviously the the uplift that video games can enjoy they can't meet the new requirements on the uplift. Um, they're pretty well film focused, so we want to make sure that we mo remove them from from this part of the of the code, if you will, and keeping their credit status quo. All right. The difference from this version, the version you had would be on page nine. Um, there was a 500,000 on your bill that's at 750,000. There was an aggregate of 10 million that has now been reduced to 8 million. Um, yeah, that's to, to me, that's a personal preference for the Senate if that's where you wanna be on it. I can tell you, we started out at a million and then after conversations about indie films and looking at some of the information from the Department of Revenue, we felt like the 500,000 piece would catch 75% of those indie films and that's why we did it. But obviously that's a policy call for you guys to make, but that's the reason we had 500. Originally we started out at a million. There was some concern, uh, a group out of Augusta that does a lot of indie films was concerned that, that, um, that, that we, may, we may lose that segment of the. All right. Um, I think the new language on page 10 and 11 is pretty much what you had in there. Yeah, and I can go through that with the committee if I need to. It basically changes the uplift from just the peach to, uh, to four out of nine criteria. And a lot of it was to make sure we were, film was doing what we wanted it to do. Um, a piece was uh, making sure that 50% of the um, filming occurred in underutilized areas. Um, they can utilize uh, post-production as one of them. Uh, obviously, 50% of their crew members is one. That's jobs. 50% of their vendor vendors, which is small businesses. Um, that's one of them. And then, obviously, the big one's at $30 million. And then, I'm looking through. The, re the other is um, st studio leases, et cetera. There's a film academy is one of them being joined with the Film Academy, and then obviously the Peach, or whatever Department of Revenue decides in the future if they want to move it from the Peach. Although Chairman Dickey All was right. pretty adamant so, about the Peach. So line, um, I'm sorry, pages 13 through 17 is again your, I think all that's moving the production to the, to the back section. Um, let me look at all of that and be sure I think that's the case. Yeah, that's clear. That's still clarification on the video game piece. All right. And then and then if you go to page 18, the difference there is you had a 2.5. This version has a 2.3 in it. Um, but there has been a change that puts a lot of people not under the 2.3 cap. So I'm not sure that cap will ever be hit anyway. You want to go through those changes for me? Yeah, we, sh we should get to it um, in a little bit here. I'll make sure if, if not, I'll go back and, and get to it. Um, I apologize. I'm not Rain Man today, so I need all the help I can get. Right. Well, this this sub uh, has a few lines different, so I had, I had one highlighted up in yellow that 
15 minutes ago became not the right one. And um, we can also draw on ledge council who's probably seen more of this than she wanted to over the last uh, couple of weeks. So, um, matter of fact, I might, um, <coughs> Petros, I need, I need her to be with us here. Okay, you didn't have one, okay, but you, but you drew it up so you know what's in there. Okay, so let's talk about the cat, the language that puts those outside the 2.3 cap, if you can do that. That's what I'm going to have her do. Yes. And if she needs a minute, we can always come back to that point. Is that, I think if you're on uh, 559, line, line 559 would probably be it. That exempts those from the cap if they're a Georgia-based qualified production facility, substantially completed, 23 to 27, investment. You can you can speak right here if you want to. Okay, yeah, why don't you go to the okay, witness sure. thing? That's probably good. Come on in. I might the water's to, warm. I might have to suppress his mic if he if if he won't. It's been a long day. Here. I figure a little humor might help get through the rest of it. Okay, you're live now. Okay, on lines five fifty nine through 564, we are adding a definition uh, for Georgia-based qualified production facility. And you can see the language there. Uh, there's two ways to, to meet this definition. Um, the first, under paragraph A, it's for a facility that was substantially completed between January 1, 2023, and June 30th, 2027, in which the construction investment was in excess of 100 million. Um, and this is for a purpose-built studio sound stages. And the second way to meet that definition is if the purpose-built studio sound stages has more than 1.5 million square feet of stage space. And then the operative language of this new subsection starts in line 565. And this is the language that exempts it from the transfer cap that's provided in subsection F. OK. Any questions on, any questions on that? Okay, go ahead. So what's the purpose of having the date of January 1st, 2023? And I guess my real question is, if a studio was built before that and has a million five square feet or a hundred million of investment and it was built before 2023, it does, does it qualify or does it not? Um, I can't speak to the purpose or the intent of including that language. But as to your, your legal question, if a studio was substantially completed before January 1st, 2023, no, it would not qualify. So I'll just, Tyler Perry Studios, he built his back in 2020, I believe, or 2019. He has invested hundreds of millions of dollars in Fort McPherson and redeveloping that. And with sound, sound stages and all the employees he has, he would not qualify for this? What's that? The 1.5 million square feet? <clears throat> I mean, why, why wouldn't we just say uh, that was subst substantially completed by June 30th, 2027 and not even have the January 1st, 2023? Let's, uh, I'd like to strike that. I mean, I'll make a, a, an amendment down the road, but I want to get some clarification. 
I'm not sure if Tyler, uh, Tyler Perry's investment, I assume, is over $100 million. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean. <laughs> And I know I, I think he's got more than a million five square feet. Of, I've been out there. I've been out there with Chairman Ron Stevens, Chairman Stevens, and I've been out there with our economic development group. And I was on the, the local so. authority to review Fort Knox, and they're involved. I'm sure there's someone in the audience that have a little information on that on what that student. All right, we'll 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 well. continue that at a later point. Um, is this? Uh, one, two, is that Senator Brass? Do you have a question? No, I'll wait. Okay. Anybody? I didn't. That wasn't you, Senator Tillery, was it? Okay. No, that was me. Okay. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's try to move on. Thank you. Of course. Appreciate your work on this. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's your world, obviously, but I think uh, Chairman Beach has a fair argument that says, look, we're here to, we want to make sure that we're servicing the facilities that have been, in, that have invested in the state up to this point, but understand that um, moving forward, we have to be fiscally responsible with of the uh, state resources. All right, we'll come back to that point. Um, 25, page 25 and 26. And again, I don't have my highlighted yellow since this is a different sub. I don't think there's anything significant there in 27. 28 is no new language, basically. 29 is not. Section four is the uh, interactive entertainment industry investment, page 30. You want to talk about that? I think all that's just the, the cleanup language of moving it out. Unless you guys have changed it, all we did with that language was move it out of that code section and into its own so that it wouldn't overlap in the, um, into that 2.3% uh, percent of the revenue number um, and try to maintain the status quo on their, on their tax credit. There was conversations that, as successful as the industry's been and the return on investment, that we would lump them in that big 2.3, but that didn't get anywhere with all the, all the ideas in the room. So that's just basically moving them out. All They're, the lines that were stricken out earlier, it's moving them into their own section. That's correct. And there is another piece I think that's important for the Department of Revenue that if there's a, if there's an appeal process on a on a certificate, if the Department of Revenue deems to be correct, then the, the people bringing the appeal have to pay for the legal fees, and I think that's reasonable. All right. Lose or pay, I guess, is the best way to say that. So, unless somebody needs to go through that interactive, I think that's the same as in the sub I'd seen before, where they just moved out their own section. And, w and what's your cap on that? It's the same cap. It didn't change. What was it? Twelve five, maybe, ten, twelve point five million. Right. All right. Questions from the committee. That's way too fast to go through something like this. But I apologize with it getting changed that I don't have uh, my notes highlighted here. Senator Estevez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just can we get a explanation of the different sections? And obviously, I've gone through it, but I'd love to know the rationale. Maybe I missed the hearing where we went through it before. Okay, but this is the first time. We, and this is the first time we've okay. done it in this committee. That's correct. Yep. You want to give a yeah? I mean, I can give synopsis. you a quick synopsis, Jason. Or uh, I apologize, Senator, Senator Estevez. The imp we tried to strike a balance between being physically responsible, making sure that we were going to nurture this industry, continue to nurture it in the state of Georgia. That 2.5, now 2.3 limit on the, on the state revenue number was important because it, it allowed the industry to continue to grow as the state budget 
grows. But it also says, look, we got to make sure that this thing doesn't get out of control so we can't perform the other services that the government provides. And so that was the conversation that started. It was just guardrails, I think. And I think the industry, the production companies were real comfortable with it. Um, obviously, as it's come into the Senate, it has become a conversation of make sure that the, con the people that have invested billions in the state um, didn't come against that cap. And so it dropped from 2.5 to 2.3. Um, and I think it's a, that's a fair move. Um, and I think in the long run, it'll actually work out better for the industry than the bill that came over. But then there was also conversations about what are some areas that we want to make sure we're focusing on. Obviously, being a, a guy from Dalton that doesn't seem much film at all, it was important to make sure we were uh, having conversation about underutilized areas in the state. There's pockets all over the state of people investing in the industry, and we want to make sure that we'd open that up to them. And then there's also pieces in there, making sure we're focusing on Georgia jobs, Georgia small businesses, um, post-production, all those other pieces. So all that was added into the uplift, so they get them from the, to, to the extra 10%, from the 20 to the 30. And so that's what that did. It changed that criteria from one to four out of nine. And that's basically what the bill does. It, it doesn't, it's pretty simple at that point for a $900 million All right, line Senator, item. Senator Brass, I think you were next. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I appreciate all your work on this. And my understanding <coughs> is that all parties involved, including the industry, uh, were in, in agreement with, with most of what's in this substitute. The only concern I have, and I don't know that this was agreed to, is on lines 1106. Right. where you've got the sunset saying this code section shall stand repealed and reserved on December 31st of 2029. Thank you for that. What, what line one more time? That would be lines ele line 1106. Okay, I, th I think that that applies to the video game and not the film. I'm not the lawyer in the room, but I think that, that sunset is the video game sunset, not the film. But... If I'm wrong, please let me know. Uh, well, when it says this section, it's that section, section four. Four. I'm sure the video game guys would support taking that out. Yeah, everybody always supports taking out sunsets. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I, I mean, Mr. Chairman, if you'll allow. Um, yeah, you can have it. You know, one of the reasons the industry has agreed to making any changes is so that there can be some stability. And um, if we're putting a sunset in, then there's a lot of uncertainty out there. I agree with that. And that is that is a concern for me, and I, I don't want to speak for the entire industry, but I would imagine that would be a be a concern for them as well. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. We we never talked about a sunset, so um, okay. that's new language. If that's we've, what it we've is, had a I, lot of things over here, we put sunsets on trying to be consistent. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I understand. Senator I just, uh, Albers, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it's been the posture of the Senate to put a five-year sunset on everything. In fact, uh, we passed just a few days ago a bill that reset and put sunsets across the board on on many different tax expenditures, so we would have the opportunity to measure the effectiveness of them on the fourth year. So in the fifth year when it came up, we could make an educated decision as a General Assembly whether it was still providing the return on investment to the state uh, and have a process by which uh, it didn't go on in perpetuity uh, and then have uh, a negative effect. If it's having a good effect, it gives the opportunity to relook at it, tax ex expand it, extend it, et cetera. Yeah, let me let Ms. Senator Hickman was next yeah. first. And thank you, sir. I, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, can you define the underutilized county list? I mean, is that underutilized? For what so reason? the Department of Economic Development is going to develop that radius, but I would I would charge that it's anything outside the metro area. Um, well, we 285 would probably be a good starting point. 285 out. So um, you don't have a list? No, 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 not a list. But I can assure you, if you're outside the metro, it includes you. Uh, depart we felt like it was important to give the uh, Department of Economic Development some leeway in that area because they know exactly where exactly where everything's at. Clearly, Trillith South, Trillith would be utilized. So anything below Trillith would be probably considered underutilized. 
et cetera. So I think, I think leave, instead of trying to define terms of population, which we started to, et cetera, it was important that we were able to create hubs around the state instead. So okay. that's the point. Thank you, sir. All right, Senator Brass. Sure, just a follow-up to, or follow-up question to Chairman Albers. Did we put a sunset on the, on the Oregon credit bill? And would you support that? I would be happy to add sunset to that bill. Okay. I don't believe that, but okay. All right. Other questions? Senator Estevez. I guess two, two questions. To piggyback off the, chairman, the chairman's question, uh, it seems like there's an effective date of 2026, if I'm not mistaken. And then there's a sunset date for 2029, which seems shorter than the five-year period we typically would put put on it. So just wondering the, the rationale there. And then the second question that I have is for independent films, we had a strike and obviously those independent films helped to keep a lot of folks employed, uh, including small businesses. What uh, what has been done or could be done to make sure we're accommodating those those productions? I think I think that 750 is going to catch most of them. Um, obviously, it's not going to be a guy with a with his phone out in the parking lot doing a film, um, but I think it will. The 750 number will meet the majority of those, maybe even more than the majority. And I, I see what you're saying now, Chairman uh, Chairman Brass. That's 763 is the sunset line for film. Uh, right. The other one is uh, is interactive entertainment, but this code section 763. And I would, uh, you know, I understand the posture of of this committee on sunsets. I would just urge you to to understand that businesses operate better in surety. Um, we're not talking about small investments. We're talking about billions of dollars worth of investments. Um, this body can come together anytime it wants and end a tax credit. Um, All right. I understand we've, we've heard you say that a couple of times. It's almost six years from now. Um, Senator Tillery. Mr. Chairman, at the right time, move to pass. LC 50091S6S. Uh, All right. We've got a motion, a second. Um, any other discussion? I'd like, I'd like to offer an amendment on line 561, um, strike between January 1st, 2023, and add the word by June 30th, 2027. So that would, it would just say that was substantially completed by June 30th, 2027. You would strike out the between January 1, 2023. Yeah. Add the word by. All right, we've got a amendment offered in a second. Um, got an additional amendment. Okay, another amendment. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I was going to comment on this, but in um, in response to Senator e Albert uh, Estevez, sorry. Um, I do have some concerns on the 750,000. I'm okay with that number, but the aggregate I do feel is, is not going to capture a lot of those independent films. I do feel like that 8 million is too high. Mm -hmm. So I propor propose on lines 213, we strike the word, the letter, or the number 8 and replace that with 3.5. 3.5, that will capture what, what that? they're looking Explain for. That's that on lines 213, strike 8, and replace with 3.5. And then I've got the sunsets. I can do it all as one amendment or? Do it all as one amendment. Okay. Or, well, no, do, that's amendment two, so now amendment three. Okay. Second it, okay. All right, got a second. Um, amendment three. <coughs> right. What was the third amendment? I'm looking for the line number on uh, just striking through line 763 in its entirety. 
as well as mm -hmm. 1106 okay 310 okay can I go back to I have a 2 2 B okay I missed the line 2B is going to 2A, I'm sorry, 2A on line 310, strike through the number 8 and add the number 3.5. Okay, so that's 1106. That's 2B. 2B, 2A okay. actually. 2 was the original. 310. Again, that's to help out our smaller independent films. Will help with commercials as well, which helped us get through the strike. Um, all right, and then three, also part of um, going back to Amendment Three. I guess I need a second on that first. Second. Okay. And then for the remaining part of three, we're, as I stated earlier, we're striking 763. And then I also propose to strike 1106. Second. In its entirety. All right. Um, and I can repeat all those if need be. I think I think we're good. Do we do in the one, two, three, or three, two, one? Or does it matter? Um, we'll do the, the, the first amendment, I guess, that was offered. And I, I do want to add, I think the lieutenant governor's office was very involved in this, and I didn't get this actual final sub and I, I think this is what had been negotiated with the industry and everything and they were all good with it um, well mr. chairman the reason I offered this amendment I don't think it matters if it was built before January if it was built before January 2023 but it still made a hundred million dollars of investment and met the uh, 1.5 million square feet they should get the tax credit I don't care if it was <coughs> when it was really built we've had a lot of investment in the film industry for years and years and years and everybody should be able to benefit all right um, we've got amendment one that was offered it's got a second all in favor of amendment one raise your sure sure go ahead this is the uh 2023 okay yeah i think I they're wanna, both working i just want to point out for chairman beach it's or on line 563 so the, the way that the amendment's being changed now is it would either be complete construction by 2027 and in which the construction investment is 100 million, or, which the next one's gonna capture Trillith, right? Or that has more than 1.5 million square feet. So it, it, it would be correct. So I don't know, maybe Chairman, you do know why part A was put in here. I think there probably was some specific intent. And my understanding is that the way this would currently work would be three studios would qualify. Um, essentially, if we do this, my question would be, why do we have a cap? <laughs> because this, you know, we, we, we have this policy position on line 458 that puts this cap in place. And now we're essentially gonna take every single studio out of the cap, um, which is fine if that's what we wanna do. I just wanna make sure we understand that's what we're doing here. All right, um, we've got a motion I mean, uh, an amendment on the floor by Senator Beach I had a second. All in favor of that amendment, raise your hand. Okay, opposed. So let's see. One, two, three, four, uh, five. Are there six? Six, okay. So there were seven, four, six against. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote to uh, tie that. So that would make that amendment fail. Okay. I think yeah. I think you had the votes before you broke the tie to, to, to end it. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it again. I may have miscounted. Let's do it again. Those those in favor of the amendment, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm seeing six. Is that correct? One, two, three, four. Five, six, okay, I see. Seven. I, I didn't see Anna Vitar put his hand up. Okay, seven. seven. Okay, and and opposed. 
Okay, so you're right. The motion carries. The amendment carries. What's the okay. vote final? Seven five. Okay. You Okay, then I, then I voted a tie, so I was right the first time. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That's correct. So it ties, as earlier said. Okay, so the amendment doesn't proceed. Um, amendment two and two B. You want to restate that, Chairman Brass? You want to restate your two two A and two B? All right. On line so two was striking on line two thirteen the number eight and making it replacing with three point five. Two A was on line three ten striking eight and replacing with three point five. All right. Um, is there a sec we had a second to that, I believe. So, any more discussion on that issue by anybody? All in favor of the amendment, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Am I counting correct? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and opposed? One, two, three, four, five. Am I? Is it one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll tie again, then that amendment fails. All right, what else have we got? We've got amendment three on lines, striking lines, 763 and striking line 1106. Okay, that's the sunsets. That is the sunset. Okay. We had, we had a second on that. Is there any um, is there any further discussion on that? Um, all in favor of removing the sunsets, raise your hand. Six, seven. I think I see eight votes. So that that motion will carry. That amendment carries. So we're back to the underlying bill. All those in favor of this bill as amended, raise your hand. Wait, is this, we're, both this, we're back to the underlying bill. Final passage of the bill as, as amended. amended. Correct. Like the way she looks now. All right, raise your hand if you support the bill as amended. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those opposed? One, two, three, four, five, nine to you vote twice, I think. eight to six, motion carries. <laughs> Is that right? I voted yes. Yeah, He's motion carries. He's kind of using no, I think. Oh. Yes. Eight, eight to six, okay. <laughs> it passed either way. All right. Well, all right. I guess I'm out of here, gentlemen. Here, it's been yes, a pleasure. Sir. Appreciate your work right. on this be, issue. Be done with you. God bless you. We've got um, we've got we've got 1182 that we still didn't deal with before. Um, we've had a couple of things on that, so we were going to go back and revisit it. Um, I think Senator Ambatarte wanted to offer an amendment to this. You want to state your amendment? We'll put 1182 out. All right, we, we got to keep moving, guys. We, we've got a lot to cover. All right, Mr. Chairman. Get everybody's attention here. We got to keep moving. 1182. 1182. 1182. Go ahead with your amendment, Senator right. Anna Uh Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'm going to offer an amendment to House Bill 1182, LC500878S, as follows. Uh, delete line 42 and replace it with the following. Reserves or prioritizes a majority of its units for seniors or persons with disability disabilities or provides a preference. Uh, delete one, line 126, 
and replace it with the following reserves or priori prioritizes a majority of its units for seniors or persons with disabilities or provides a preference and I can provide this to the I think I just gave you a copy for the committee for the record okay and I'll make that as a motion at the appropriate time okay 1182 yes it is should be in your folder all right well let's let's go back we've heard his motion but let's go back I we we'll probably for the new meeting to first have a motion on the underlying bill we've got a motion from Senator Tillery a second from Senator Albers now there's an amendment from Senator Anna Vitarte that would add reserves or prioritizes a majority of its units for seniors or persons with disabilities or provides a preference on replacing line 42 and replacing line 126 with with that item there same same language we've got a second on the amendment from Senator Tillery um, all in favor of the amendment raise your hand Okay, what? Uh, Senator Estevez had a question. Sorry, I missed well, it. Well, I had an amendment to offer as well. Okay. Ready for um, go ahead, yeah. Uh, on line 58, change that 50 to 88%. And on line 142, change it from 50 to 88 percent. All right, we've got a motion, a second to change from 50 to 88. I don't know. That's a number that we had heard, uh, Mr. Chairman, from um, from folks who who do these projects from, from, de from development authorities, there's a th threshold at which these projects no longer become viable. And I had heard that in the last hearing that 88% was that proposed number. Okay. So we've got a motion and a second to change 50 to 88. All in favor of that amendment? Pardon? Do you have a discussion? We did. Um, We'd already had the discussion. Be, if you'd say something quick, we were already under the motion. All right, if I can say something quick. Uh, I, I have, a, I have uh, many, many uh, projects in my community that have benefited from this uh, tax credit. And uh, it's often said that uh, they build it anyway. They'll do it anyway. Uh, and I, I was involved in the imper bringing the imper bringing the imperial, what? what? Are you si you're not signaling me, are you? No, it's no man. Oh, good. Your neighbor there. It's, it's often, I've heard it said that they'd build this anyway, they'd do it anyway. This, the, the, this money is part, a vital part of the package to make these projects doable. For-profit developers are not doing affordable housing out of the goodness of their heart. They're doing it when there's financing, when there's tax credits for it. Okay. That's, I, I that's think, what makes it possible. I think you stated that in the last meeting, too. We were... Just on to the, to the amendments, yeah. That, that's, Mr. Chairman, that's true that I have stated this before. I've okay. since learned of another, another, another development in East Point that will be opening up with the benefit of using these tax credits. Right. Uh, I helped develop the uh, Imperial, the, the package to fund taking the, Imper uh, the Imperial Hotel downtown, turning it into workforce housing. It relied on these tax credits, and I will remind the committee that we do not have any other, unlike a lot of states, this is the only place that we fund affordable housing and incent it. And, and it's a policy matter. Are we going to help build up affordable housing? All right. I know state? you got great passion. You've, you've you. stated this yeah. for us, and we appreciate that. Um, all in favor of this amendment, raise your hand. This this is your amendment, yes. So we got one, two, three votes. Those opposed to the amendment, raise your hand. All right, the, the amendment fails. Now we're back to uh, the caucus chairman's amendment to change those lines. All those in favor of that amendment, raise your hand. Disabilities. The disabilities, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, tw
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yes votes. Okay, so that motion carries. Now we're back to the underlying bill. All those in favor of the bill as amended, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, that motion carries. Um, so the, the bill has passed as amended. Opposed, raise your hand. Sure, I mean, it was pretty obvious with the votes we had. Yeah, four against. Okay. All right, let's move on to, uh, uh, let's see, what have we got left here? Let's go on to H.R. Uh, 96, Representative Williams. There is a compromise language sub in there uh, that I know Senator Tillery has worked on. If you want to, if you want to speak to it. Yeah. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Have you got a copy of it? No, sir. I well, let, right. let's get you one to, to, okay. to you down there. Okay, go, go ahead. Thank you, I'll, I'll defer to uh, Senator Tillery. He's got the five points. Well, thank, thank you, and thank you, uh, no, uh, Representative Williams, for working with me on it. Uh, in committee, when we talked about it, there was a huge issue. didn't seem like it would make it out with the reimbursement issues in. We took the state liability off of that portion. There was a solar CUVA breach issue that I had. We fixed that, but we pushed it out to 2028 before it would apply. Um, and then we kept uh, – the grant because some folks were worried about the local communities if we took off the reimbursement piece and no one will have to pay any uh in this draft would have to pay any severance tax on the first half a million dollars of timber cut but after the half a million then the severance tax would pick back up so it does give a, a big break especially for small uh smaller operators and and we were thinking that was 100 to 200 acre tracts of land when we were talking about that five hundred thousand dollar break for really good, good timber I don't remember if that was the 250 or the one or the, but I, yeah, at least that. So right. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, it was LC 432595, but then there was a sub to that. The, the sub is 50909S. Sure, go ahead. The, uh, with the Cuba language, is Correct. it not true that we're working on potentially being able to send a house bill over so that we can take the Cuba language off as it goes back? Yes, the gentleman knows what he speaks. We have been working on that the past 24, 48 hours. Had a lot of conversations. Up. And I thank, I thank you for your help with this and all the members that have right. put their Silver input in. All right, any, any questions on the bill as, as um, amended? Senator thank, Ork. thank you, Mr. Chairman. To the uh, author of the amended uh, of the committee sub, what what is um, the impact of uh, no longer being able to use property for solar generation of energy when you have a conservation or covenant? Could you could you you didn't I haven't heard you speak to the to the, the, the content. Right, that was the language we were just talking about uh -huh, that, yeah. that fix a solar breach. However. And if the bill, we expect the, uh, Mr. Chair, Chairman, I don't want to speak out of turn for your, no, 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 your chamber, ahead, but fine. we expect a House bill will be coming over where we will be able to take that language off later. Uh, Thank what you. happens right now is if when you put your land into a CUVA, essentially you're taxed at 40% of that value. But if you break that CUVA, you lose that. You benefit. lose that and you pay a two times penalty. Mm -hmm. uh, about roughly. Um, of the tax plan that you, the, the, what you would have paid. If you breach that, then you have to pay a two times penalty times the number of years. With solar, there was a preferential thing put on sometime in 2017 that said you only have to pay one year of that penalty. And it doesn't seem fair if our purpose is to protect land and hold it into forestry and farm to allow for a breach of forestry and farm to not also have that penalty that we would levy on foresters or uh, small farmers if they were breaching for any other reason. Thank you. 
All right, any other questions by the committee? If not, we could have a motion on the substitute. We've got a motion by Senator Tiller. Is there a second? Second. Second by Senator Calvert. Is there any other discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. I can't tell. Are you up, Senator Estevez? Okay. All right. So it looks like it's unanimous. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. All right. Is uh, Representative um, Washburn here? I don't know if Representative Washburn's here or not. Okay. All right. We'll move on to. Um, uh, Representative Buckner, if you want to come up. All right, so um, the uh, the residential part was set to expire. I know the, the House has actually put this on another bill. Is that correct? Okay, and and so with what's in this bill, uh, you still want to move forward here? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, let's get make sure she's got a copy of the sub we've got. What we've done the the uh, historic tax credits don't expire until 2027. Um, the um, residential expires at the end of this year. What our version did was increase the sunset to 2027 on the residential, even though the audit said there's really, don't measure on economic values. They increased it to 2027 to, to match it up, and then that would be a discussion at that point. So that's the underlying sub we have here right now. The, the LC number is, um, 30, I'm sorry, LC 50911S, House Bill 1116. I'll, I'll state it one more time. The, the uh, commercial doesn't expire until the end of 2027. It's been at 30 million. The, residential expires at the end of this year is shown to be it's historically been about a million on that we had increased it to two and a half million on the residential till 2027 and then they would both sunset at the same time and be looked at you know 26 27 somewhere in there any discussion Right, you you had a, I had I had a lot of subs given to me. Okay, okay. Well, I'm trying to figure out where I'm at. Yeah. So this one, this one, uh, I'll, I'll state it again. This one doesn't change the commercial at all. It stays like it is through 2027, like it is right now. The residential that was going to expire, that has historically been about a million used, right. it raises that. It, it, sunsets it to 27 like the other part and raise and it will be at two and a half million in the in that version so that's the that's the two things in this bill there's not a lot here uh i don't know if you want to speak to what you've got in the in the senate bill 496 is coming over as a substitute with some different language in it i know the difference in yours and that one is that we had some language to allow the department of community affairs to be able to look at communities because we were looking and hoping for the residential section to be able to help address <coughs> the housing shortfall because we've got a lot of inventory of older houses that are not necessarily super antique they're 30s 40s and and even 50s that are historic so they would be able to declare them historic not necessarily um, on the register, but um, they could become historic neighborhoods that could benefit from this tax credit and we could help address the housing issue. So it had that definition, it had the sunset, and it also had the sunset for the um, uh, 
1197, which was the rural downtown um, historic mm -hmm. development, and it just Houston. Penny Houstonsville, and it mm -hmm. would extend her sunset. That's, so it had two sunsets in that definition. So the only difference is is the definition and the Penny Houstonville was on the one that we worked on this morning. Okay, so you had that yesterday. as well. Senator Kennedy. Are we in discussion, Mr. Chairman? We are. Great. Thank you. I just wanted to say, Representative, thank you for bringing this bill. This is important. This has been an, inc an incredibly useful tool for especially in Macon. preserving historic properties around the state, but especially in Macon. I've got Josh Rogers, one of my constituents, who is uh, heads up a historic preservation um, group in Macon that's been very successful. It's made an incredible difference in areas around Macon, around Mercy University, where this, this tax credit really was the tipping point in making this pencil out for properties to be rehabilitated. It has helped maintain our culture in Macon in so many ways, and so I'm very supportive of this. Thank you for bringing it. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Rogers came to testify, but given the lateness of the hour, uh, unless someone has a question about this, he, he would be happy to wave probably and not speak, uh, would be my thought. Okay. Thank you. Um, any questions from the committee? I saw Senator Estevez. You yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I know we heard that it rarely went above a million, but ha has the, what's the highest number of credits that have been issued in any given year. Are you familiar with that? And I will, I has, think it got, has it gotten close to 2.5 or 5 million? It uh, was, I think the number that I was given today was 1.8. Okay. So the 2.5, if we really did a push and tried to do some, use some of these houses to um, help fill with the housing market would give us a little buffer to be able to grow. So that would be a good number. All right, any other questions? Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, please clarify for me. Um, th so right now, the, the housing credit has <coughs> one expiration date and the commercial credit has a different expiration date. Wouldn't it be better if we had them both on the same? That's day? what this bill does. Okay. okay. It moves that's them why, all that's to, why I'm asking for clarification. It moves, them, moves, okay. moves this one up through 2027 okay. like okay. the commercial so okay. that that's so that we don't we we start doing this every five years okay. instead of every two and a half years. Okay. Second, second question is. In one of the versions I saw, there was an increase in the commercial credit to 60 million. Is that still? That's here? not in here, and that's not what the House passed out, and I wouldn't recommend that okay. personally. I think we well, ought to look at that. Okay. And the other thing is, there, there was also a, a recommendation about changing the carry forward from, from five years to three years. Mm -hmm. There's also a recommendation about care, the carry forward that they haven't discussed either. Okay. To say that okay. again, I was getting distracted nah, here. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion? Well, uh, can, I, can I say one thing? Uh, piggyback on Senator Kennedy. Th this credit has also been a magnificent credit for our area, too. Okay. The Savannah, as Senator Albert said the other day, we all know Savannah. But it's also been a great credit for my hometown. We, we took, they took an old hospital, the original hospital in state for that turned into a hotel and then renovated into apartments. Good credit. Thank All right, thank you. And Senator Kennedy? At the appropriate time, Mr. Chairman. I think it's time. I'd like to make a, I'd like to make a motion to pass uh, House Bill 1116, uh, LC 50911S okay. by sub. Second by Senator Rett. Thank Any you. more other discussion? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to uh, add that I'm hopeful as we go through the process, uh, and of course I have all kinds of neighborhoods that have benefited from this uh, 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 approach to property that's uh, blighted and can be, uh, you know, reignited with this. Uh, but I'm hopeful that we could look at as we go forward these houses, houses that you described, uh, Senator, uh, Representative Buckner, that are 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, that turning them around can really turn around blighted neighborhoods and address uh, housing needs, you know, workforce housing. So that could be s something. Uh, looking forward as we as we move through the process. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've we've had a motion. We've had a second. I don't see any other discussion. All in favor of this, raise your hand. All right. Uh, looks like it's unanimous. Unless I missed something. Motion carried. Um, I don't. Did Representative Washburn? I'm, I'm sorry, not Washburn. It was Representative Vance Smith. I'm sorry. I called the wrong name earlier. I apologize. He's got one too. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
All right, let me, let me get everybody's attention on this and, and tell you what we've got here. This bill, get, get everybody's attention. We, this bill was passed out in, I believe, this exact form last year by the Senate. It got hung up in rules. There had been a disagreement between, on the time frame between superior court clerks and between uh, the assessors, and they split their 180 days into 290 each. Um, the um, uh, other issue is that they were letting some, some of the assessors be hearing officers in some other counties because there's such a huge shortage of it. That's the essence of the bill. You're welcome to repeat that or see if there's a motion. We did pass this out in this exact form last year. I agree. I'm good. If there's no questions from the committee, we've got a motion from Senator Orock, second from Senator Estevez. Um, Sam. We're, we're, we're getting you a unanimous vote probably on this. I don't know, but I, I, you, you, you know, you might say something and nope. bring something up to somebody that doesn't nope. like. Um, all those in favor, raise your hand. Um, any opposed? I think it's unanimous. Uh, that motion carries. I believe we are adjourned. Last meeting of the year. Thank you all.